did not understand the assignment. Um, this platform is great, and I really, I actually, I do think it's a, it's a fantastic little craft, and my autofocus sucks, but this is, it's a fantastic little craft. The, the frame is super durable. It flies great. I'm just allergic to platforms like this, so I know that I can just take it off and pop it on an X frame and get a fantastic 1S flying quad, which is unusually efficient as well. I'll talk about it in a minute, but let's let's talk about this is the where it kind of came from. Anyways, let's talk about something else first because I I truly think that this is not the it's not the star of the show. So I want to talk to you about the controller. So this is Emacs's cheapo kind of controller, and I say cheapo just because it is really designed to just be a whoop controller. However. I just finished making a video about how great the Boxer is, and it is fantastic, and I really love it, especially with my mods. I have full stick range, I have really nice gimbal ends, it, like it really is a great overall controller. So full range gimbals to me means 44 millimeters, stick end to stick end. 100, positive 100 to negative 100 is 44 millimeters. This thing does like 52 millimeters stick end to stick end in a controller that is, look how much thinner it is. It's about 30% thinner across the board. All dimensions about 30% smaller. The backside has these perfect little bumps on them. The controller just fits in your hand, no matter if you're a thumber or a pincher, whatever you are, it just fits in your hand so well. And you have full access to all the range and you can absolutely feel that extra four or five millimeters of, of throw on these gimbal sticks. And I have directly messaged the CEO of Emacs asking him to please improve the quality of this just a little bit. Just increase the stick tension, change these button, these switches to something that is not so janky looking that's going to crack off and um, give it a, a, a module bay. Now, this one is the updated version. It has 100 milliwatt ELRS in it. It works great with the the, the craft is fantastic with the craft ELRS. I've had nothing but good good results with the ELRS. Also, I joined the ELRS party pretty late after they had already figured out all the software stuff, so I didn't even run into any of the software issues. Overall, this is the gem. This is what we need. Controllers should be this size. We don't need any screen. We don't need any, any fuss with the controller. I truly believe if they just took this, gave it a module bay, and just improved slight things here and there about it, they have a true winner winner of a controller. I can't gush about this enough. Yes, compared to the Boxer, it does feel a little cheapy, but overall, the proportions, the way it fits in your hand, the stick range, the hall sensor gimbals, where the trims are and how it functions, it's just, it's perfect. It's exactly what we need. We just need a high quality version of this with a module bay. Okay, done talking about that. Okay, let's talk about the rest real quick. The goggles are fine. They are, um, actually, I, I really might very much like these box goggles. They fit me better than the recent DJI goggles. DJI uses like a brick wall as their face model. Don't really understand that. Uh, anyways, when you extend it maximally, you get a reasonable view of the screen. And then this is a, um, the special thing about this craft is that it has HD zero built into it. Let me pop this off. This is the screen and it's actually magnetic in I get hair off it. It's magnetic into the goggles. So it's really cool to be able to take it off. The only real issue I have with this is, well, the battery life is not that great, but it's a, it's sufficient. It's like an hour, hour and a half, something like that. The biggest issue I have with this is that the screen is kind of low quality and the contrast is fine. All that is fine. The problem is ghosting. So the first time I started flying it, it was a little hard to fly because there was so much ghosting. I, it would just blur anytime I would turn the craft. So it was a little bit hard to get used to. For indoor flying and the small whoop, it's totally fine. The HD view is beautiful. HD zero is great. There's really no latency. You can, I can't actually tell versus DJI, but it's not, it's not enough of a difference for me to care. Uh, it just isn't, but HD zero is great. It is fantastic. And I'll talk about the craft in a second, but it really is nice. Um, I just wish the ghosting wasn't there. It's only an issue when I'm flying outdoors with a one S when the thing is going a lot faster than indoors. And that's when it's, it's problematic. So that is that screen. Now let's talk about the craft, which is probably what everybody came here for. Okay, so I started out with this guy. Started with this guy, and um, again, I said this is, this is totally fine. There's a couple things that I'm not a, a big fan about how they originally set it up. Is they have the connector on there, which is a really low end connector. Not a low end. But it's not like low quality or anything. It's just this little connector, the PHG. It is a solid pin connector, so you're going to get good amperage out of it. But overall. It, it's just not my style. It just it just irks me to use this connector when I know that it performs so poorly compared to an XT30. Also, they have a little tiny capacitor on there. Absolutely no point in that. 
especially at the end of a, of a battery lead, does zero. So um, clearly this video is not for uh, beginners. This is this little battery holding bay, holding thing is actually really nice. I like this a lot, really, really nice. And it only weighs like 1.3 grams as well. The problem is that I couldn't use it because um, the plastic just bends. So if I was to tighten these bolts, it would just flex the plastic and pull through the plastic. So I couldn't use it on this. I had to use just a rubber band, which is totally fine. But overall, it fits this craft really, really nice. And so if you guys are new to this, this is the 1S baby tooth that is very old. This is actually one of the original 1S baby tooths that I built <clears throat> long ago. Has upgrade updated um kind of like the camera holding module. This is analog and it has crossfire built in as well, which I don't even have a crossfire radio anymore. I've sold it. This thing flies fantastic. It also weighs about eight or nine grams less than this guy. But this thing has HD built into it and it flies exceptionally well with stock settings from from uh, Emacs. I did not change any settings of any sort. I just set my rates in and call it a day. So I, I literally just unscrewed it from that thing and I plopped it on this frame and that that's honestly it. I happen to have two motors from long ago, which you can't really see in there. Okay, so if you look inside there, the motors in the front have connectors connected in and the motors in the back have it soldered in place because originally we started making these motors with connectors with a uh, just the little connector so you can plug it into the all-in-one boards that existed back then but then we found out that connectors are really janky and they kind of have a lot of parasitic draw and a lot of resistance so they don't really work out so well so then we started soldering and it worked out a whole lot better and we started making motors with longer solders also the front motors are 1202.5 and the back motors are 1302 motors which are different but it just, just flies great still um, I just used spare parts that I had lying around. I just found the frame in my box of spare parts. Also, I, I cracked off the connector, put an XC30 on there, and called it a day. The overall electronics and everything weighs about 17 grams, which is pretty good. And the signal quality from... I can't really speak of that. I, it kind of it, it uh, statics up a bit. I haven't gotten to its full range to see what its range is, but I'm a little bit fearful because uh, when it lets go of the signal, a lot like DJI, it takes a couple seconds for it to come back. So a couple seconds, I might be in a tree and I might not ever see the craft again. So what else is in the box is, um, I'll talk about that in a second, is this little charging thing, which is great, great little doodad. They ship it with this battery. And I have actually found that uh, Emacs batteries are actually really surprisingly good I, they're really these like one s batteries are surprisingly good quality they perform really really well they ship with a 650 milliamp because this craft is not really intended to be a super high performance craft uh and the 650 just gives you more flight time because the hd zero just draws a little bit more current out of the whole craft although i'm getting great flight time out of the this one s thing the the one s three inch thing uh, so there's that i use these batteries this is the old version this 550 from GMB is literally the very best 1S battery I've ever used across the entire industry. I just, I've been doing this a while with these 1S crafts, and this literally is the single best battery that exists in the market for the weight, for the amperage you get out of it, the performance, all of it. In my opinion, this is the one to get. We are not selling them anymore for now because shipping rates on batteries have been so astronomical anyways other cool doodads is that it comes with this thing which plugs into the controller and you can put the screen on your controller most people will be fine with with the viewability of the screen through the goggles but at some people i know will not be totally fine with it so really nice for them to include that i i really like the whole package i like the whole box i like what they've done with all the everything that the color of the casing is really nice it's, it's really great it's really i don't know how much it costs really fun. I give Emacs 100% right to remake the craft or just ship it with a Carbon X. I couldn't get the props off this thing to be able to try and put my other props on there. So I just left the motors and I just put my own motors on there. That's why I swapped the motors. But I bet you could just use exactly the same craft and motors. They could just include the carbon frame on this. And I bet most people will, well, most experienced users will have no problem converting it into this thing. And I think it would be such a cool little addition. Emacs has 100% right to sell this thing like this because they have all the parts already. They just got to put on a different carbon frame and it's good to go. And you saw the flight performance, it's fantastic. People message me daily about this. This is the 1S and 2S all-in-one board that uh, Tune RC has been working on for a long time now. And it hasn't been made because 
the, just it was too expensive. It's just too expensive to get these these pieces. It was ready just before COVID, but it was just, it just cost too much to get all the components to make the board. So this is the 1S and 2S board. This is kind of like the pinnacle of 1S, 2S kind of performance. It's not 2S as in you can't run like 10,000 kV with a 2S battery and expect super crazy crazy performance. It is a 1S board that happens to work on 2S. And that means you have to lower the KV and lower everything to get the performance in check. It doesn't really matter what the amperage is because these boards are, first of all, the board in here already performs pretty well. I'm, I'm really impressed with their 1S board. So kudos to Emacs on that. After so many generations, these guys are finally coming around. We've been making this board for a while now, and it's been it's been trouble to say the least because these 1S boards are so finicky and so delicate to kind of produce and get the traces running right. And it is the traces that are the issue. It's not the components on the board. And it's kind of a high risk board too, because now everything costs so much. So it's just, it, it's expensive at this point. And I, we, we really don't know if it's worth even selling for us. Tune RC is going to sell it. It is going to be available. You guys can absolutely pick it up and buy it. But it kind of is the death of 1S all-in-ones. This doesn't have a, a, a receiver built into it, which there is a version that's going to have ELRS built into it also. But it's sort of the death of 1S, these little tiny all-in-one boards, because they're so finicky. They have such a high failure rate. And they're so expensive to make now that it's it really sucks. The AT32 chips and the AM32 ESC uh, code and overall design is a way cheaper way to go. And I think that TuneRC is working on redesigning this board for that purpose. And if they did that, put the ELRS on board and could offer it for 40 bucks, 40, 50 bucks, that, that would be a steal. That would be fantastic. And that is what would, I personally believe, give a resurgence to the 1S, 2S platform. Also, I would like to see this board be, if I was to remake it now, because this is now a two-year-old board already because of COVID, I would like to see full 2S performance out of this board or just make it a little bigger and give it full 2S performance. Because while I love 1S, 2S is just so much, it's just so much more performance across the board. So maybe we'll see a resurgence of this field. Anyways, take care. Floss your teeth. I forgot to tell you all floss your teeth on the last video. Sorry. Please floss your teeth. Very important. Okay. Take care. Hopefully this was fun. Bye.